Did you make it? Did you make that? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, as I have it for all of you that aren't here all the time, uh, I started telling everybody what national day it was today. And I really wasn't going to do it for Easter. But he's got some really weird things on it. I think it's kind of interesting how it had all worked out. Of course, the first thing was Easter. The second thing is Unicorn Day. <laughs> Then this, the third thing is name yourself day. And then Winston Churchill, cherish an antique, Chinese almond cookie day, former prisoner of war day. And then down here at the very bottom it says, Easter is observed on the first Sunday following the full moon after the vernal equinox. And I thought, really? We needed to know that? So anyway, we are here to celebrate a risen Lord and Savior, and come on in. <laughs> and uh, so we will start doing that. Oh, I want to tell you about two things. Uh, I think I'll make you sit on the front row. <laughs> this is my eldest child. <laughs> <laughs> his, big, his little brother is in the back. He came early. <laughs> Um, okay, what was I saying? Oh, thank you, thank you, Cheryl. That's why Cheryl and I love each other. <laughs> finish my thoughts. Okay, uh, this Saturday and next Saturday, I am teaching a spiritual gifts course for the lay servant ministry of this conference. So, it, but it's something that anyone can come. Uh, to. And I know that some people are interested in knowing what their spiritual gifts are and understanding more about how that works. So I wanted to let you know about it. It's going to be from noon to 5 p.m. at the next two Saturdays. And if you want to go, I can uh, let you know what the book is. Where The book is, is one of those things where you read it and then we kind of talk about some of it. You know, uh, but it has a, a, other things that go in with it. But if you're interested in doing that, uh, it will start next Saturday at 5, and give me a call. I'll let you know about the book. The other thing I wanted to tell you about, oh, Mike, I'll let you tell you. Come here. Well, if you would be 
so good as to just look at the uh, Forever Young Fellowship idea meeting uh, statement that my wife has placed. Uh, this is my wife up here, Marilyn, I'm Mike. And, uh, I'm not going to read that to you. I would like for you to read it, though, because what we're doing is we're asking for wisdom, for assistance, for ideas, and probably for some stuff to help kick off a, a, a senior uh, Wednesdays, a, a senior uh, time of senior ministry. Um, I, as you can tell, I'm not old enough to be a senior, so I'm going to be the youth pastor in that group. <laughs> <laughs> youth pastor, but uh, anyway, so we would really like for you to come uh, this uh, April 12th, this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, and just give us ideas, because many of you have had opportunities to maybe to be involved in, in, in senior ministry elsewhere. Uh, maybe some of you have worked in nursing homes, maybe whatever. I mean, things that can really help us uh, begin to put together. We don't want to put this together just on uh, Marilyn's ideas and my ideas. We want this to be uh, a conglomerate of the good ideas that exist in the people of this body. And uh, it's our, we want this to be not only a ministry to the seniors who are now associated with the church, but we want it to be an outreach ministry uh, in, into the community around us uh, or, or extend the community out even further. But anyway, it's not going to be a babysitting service or anything like that. Uh, it's good. just going to be a, a good time. You can read what my wife has written here, and I think that will suffice. But I just wanted to remind you, please come Wednesday if you can at uh, 1. I have to check to see the time she goes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, let's stand and sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today. The Lord has risen today. Ah, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, Ah, hallelujah. Praise your joys and triumphs high. Ah, hallelujah. Sing ye heaven. Sicknesses, 
and our burdens. Today we also come before you with these people who ask for our help and ask especially for your help. We pray for Karen and Ron and Daryl W, for J.D. and Michael S, for Gary J and Marcia, for Grayson, for Kathy B, for Beth and Joyce, for Amy L, for Scott and Ginger, Carl and Emma and Ann, Jean, Jerry A, Lynn, Alice, Alice, Robert, Ann, and Gary G. Today our hearts are lighter. Today, risen Jesus, your light shines on us. When we falter, dwell richly in us. Glorious Savior, that we may be may proclaim both in our brokenness and in our wholeness that yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray with the, as the children of God, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and Friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Comforter, keeper, spirit, we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we hopelessly lost our way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us, falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. 
their, their whole story is kind of like Keystone Cops kind of thing, you know, where, where's the body? You know? so, uh, so anyway, they go through this and, and they don't know what's going on and they come back out and they walk home. They just go home. They don't go find somebody to tell them. They don't see Jesus like Mary does. They just walk home. And you can imagine they walked home a lot slower than they went there because they don't know what's going on. They don't even know how to act. But it does say that John believed when he saw in the tomb that it was empty. But it doesn't say that about Peter. Peter's too concerned about what's going on. You know, he's the, he's the rock. He's in charge. And he's trying to figure out what he's going to do. Am I going to have to go back and tell them that Jesus is gone and I don't know where he is? Am I going to have to say anything about this, you know, or do anything about this? I don't know what's going on. So they come and go back perplexed. But Mary, who has gone to tell them, they have run back and I don't know if Mary ran or not, but Mary's back there already when they come out of the tomb. So Mary comes back. And she's just sitting there crying, and she's wondering what's going on, and she's the one that gets the opportunity to see the two angels, to talk to Jesus, and she's the one that gets to tell everybody, I have seen the Lord. Now, you may, it makes you wonder if Peter and John had hung around a little bit longer, they would have seen him too. And it might have cleared up a few things that they had to say. But it's Mary, who's full of grief, has a broken heart, this is a person she was not only amazed with, but deeply devoted to, and she wants to know where he is. So when she asks that gardener, and he, he answers her with her name, you remember the story uh, about the sheep. What Jesus tells the story about the sheep know the master's voice, and when they say their name, they know it's him. That's what that's all about. That's telling you that story again. Mary knew who it was because of his voice. It kind of makes me think about sometimes like when, uh, when something happens and we call it a coincidence, that we just heard our name called and we can't figure out what it is. We're kind of like Peter was. You know, really, was that God talking to me? Did I, did I just hear God? No, nah, not me. I'm not worth it. Because we all think we're not worth it. But it is something that we, uh, we wonder about at times. You know, when I thought about Peter and, and John and their race to the, I thought about uh, the many years that I was in youth uh, ministry. And uh, at one particular church, almost all the kids that came were boys. And I learned really, well, actually, I learned because I had boys. But, uh, but if you want boys to get along, to coalesce, Make it competitive. That's, that's it. Make it a game. So, you know, it was easy for me to do the, that youth ministry because all I had to do was make a game out of the lesson and they just hung right in there. You know, it's usually you had to have something physical in it, like you got to hit each other or you got to hit a, throw a ball at somebody or something because, you know, you have to have some sort of pain in there. But, <clears throat> but they worked really good at that. And it, and it makes you wonder about the difference between males and females, even in a time where females didn't have much of anything at all. We certainly have much more now. How we connect with those that are close to us. You know, guys aren't as quick to come to the affectionate idea sometimes. And uh, I th think it's because, you know, they're supposed to be in charge, like Peter. We're supposed to be in charge, so we can't be you know, emotional about it. And we certainly can't show it if we are. So there is a, a, a sort of idea here that when, P, when Jesus says Mary's name and she understands who he is, that if Peter and John had just hung around a little bit and he had said their name, they would have known that he was there. And it would have taken a lot of that confusion and grief and all, that thing, all those things that wash over you come away. But Mary has an interest in mind. She wants to honor Christ. She wants to make sure that body is taken care of exactly like it is. And none of them, although they had heard the story 
from Jesus that he was going to die and in three days he would come back, none of them remembered it except for John and only when he was reminded by seeing the tomb. So we have here 12 people plus because of Mary and we have all these things that have been said and things that have happened and nobody figured it out. So now you know why we're in the mess we're in. We still have a hard time figuring it out. We don't hear God call our name. We don't listen for that voice. We don't ever not take control of something. Sometimes we take control of ourselves because we think that's our responsibility. But our responsibility is to pray. Our responsibility is to include Christ in what we do. But we rarely do it. We might do it when we, all of our solutions don't work, but we never do it from the very beginning. And we wonder why these disciples couldn't find Jesus. We still can't. You know, we, it takes us forever to do that. So in this story, you have, well, in this story, in any John, Luke, whatever, they, Jesus always gives them a command at the end. He says, go and tell. Go and tell. What this is, along with all the rest of them, is the same thing that Jesus told them over and over again. You have a calling to tell the story. And like I said at, at uh, 645 worship, um, we have the same call to go and tell. But what we need to remember is that it's not some edict out of the Bible that we have to tell. It has to be our story, our personal story with Christ. That's what we tell because that connects with that other person. They know you. They know your story. They know how you came to Christ. They know how you feel about that. But do you know why I think we don't do that? Because somebody might hold us accountable when we're not like Christ. Did you ever think about that? That maybe the reason we don't want to do that all the time is that somebody's going to hold us accountable. Well, that wasn't a very Christ-like thing to do. Jesus wouldn't have done that. But that's true. Because we are fallible and we are the ones that always have to uh, remember that we need to repent. Which I will say, since we talked about it in... Uh, small group this morning doesn't mean that you're sorry it means that you're going to think differently the next time think about that you're going to think differently the next time you come into that situation that's what repent means but anyway Jesus asks us to do something he asks us to go and tell and we need to remember that that is why Christ is still here today is because we are telling the story Amen. <clears throat>
came down from heaven's throne, the earth you formed was not your home. A love like this the world had never known. A crown of thorns to mock your name, forgiveness fell upon your face. A love like this the world had never known. On the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name. Jesus, Son of God, you laid down your perfect life. You are the sacrifice, Jesus, Son of God. You are Jesus, Son of God. You took our sin, you bore our shame. You rose to life, you defeated the grave. And a love like this, the world has never known. Cause you took our sin, you bore our shame. You rose to life, you defeated the grave. And a love like this, the world has never known. On the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name. Jesus, Son of God, you laid down your perfect life. You are the sacrifice, Jesus, Son of God. You are Jesus, Son of God. Be lifted higher than all you've overcome. Your name be louder than any other song. There is no power that can come against your love. The cross was enough. The cross was enough. The cross was enough, the cross was enough. On the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name. Jesus, Son of God, you laid down your perfect life. You are the sacrifice. Jesus, Son of God, you are Jesus, Son of God. Do not be afraid. Jesus has risen. You have seen the empty place where he lay. Go and tell the world that Jesus is alive. Even now, he is going before you into your your homes, your offices, your markets, your prisons, and your hospitals. Look, and you will see them. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.